All right, guys, today we're going to be swapping it back up to EDC knives, and we're going to be revisiting the new release of, or I should say revisiting the Shark Cub, but this is the newest release of the Shark Cub. So I've previously featured the original Shark Cub in G10 on the channel, and I liked it quite a bit. And recently, Demco, and I think these actually might be pre-release, but they sent me these guys over with really no warning. So these guys showed up and I figured I would at least talk about them, check them out, and go over uh, what changes and what is new with these with these models of the Shark Cub. Now, essentially with these models of the Shark Cub as opposed to their other editions, so they have an aluminum handled version of the Shark Cub, they have a G10 handled version, which is what I previously had, and they now are making them in Grivery. Now, some of the advantages of this model, and we'll go over both of the blade shapes, but some of the advantages of this model are going to be um, two things. I think the largest ones that stand out are going to be weight and um, kind of just overall handle or ergonomics. So, of course, like I said, this is Grivery as opposed to G10. Now, I will say the handle texture itself, due to the fact that it is Grivery, is a little bit more slick than something like G10. It's not going to be as aggressive as aluminum, but of course, it is going to be much lighter than both of those. In addition to that, too, they've also <clears throat> gone the way of the 8020.5, and they've made it a very streamlined um, liner on the inside. So, you basically just have your metal contact surfaces that are steel on the inside. Everything else is um, grivery. So take that for what it's worth. Is it slightly less durable? Yes, but this is also, once again, a folding knife. So at the same time, you know, you're not really going to be looking for maximum strength. Though the shark lock, like I said, every component of where the shark lock locks into and its components are all still steel and there's still a partial liner that is keeping all of that together. So as far as the actual you know, strength goes within reason, I don't really see anything wrong with this in particular. I also will note that some of the strongest little knives like these, things like the Mini Rip, had a very similar locking setup or liner setup to this where the steel was essentially a tang that stretched out to about here. And so all of your locking components and everything that has to do with the actual locking bar are still contact surfaces that are steel, whereas um, everything else was grivery. So to me, this is a lot like a kind of new generation midi grip or griptilian. So don't be alarmed by this like high use of plastic. Um, so long as all your locking contact surfaces are steel, realistically the strength isn't impeded that much. Once again, still a folder, so you can't expect wild lock bar strength. So anyways, um, aside from that, like I said, it's a little bit slick, but something that they did that is a little bit different than most of the other Shark Cubs is with the Shark Cubs, like the G10 and even the aluminum, they were very flat, very um, just like slab-sided handles. And with the Grivery, because it's a lighter material, because there's less steel in the liner, they have been able to essentially make these more contoured so you guys can actually see there is some genuine contouring here and it definitely feels more substantial in the hand. Of course, just like the last uh, Shark Cub, of course you can choke up on it, which is something I do prefer and like to have as an option. So you can see there, you can definitely get a really good grip, versatile grip, but even choked back, you can still get a full grip on this guy. Now, like I said, I would talk about the other options. The one you just saw there was what they call their slicer model. They also have the clip point model, which is a little bit more standard. Um, you Instead of having opening slot you have a thumb stud a proper removable thumb stud which I actually prefer because if you use something like a wicked edge sharpener or any type of sharpener that requires you to really clamp your knife in I do prefer having these removable thumb studs because then you can get a more complete closure on that blade from the clamp and uh, just facilitates an easier sharpening process 
So once again, this is the clip point. Um, this one just looks like a very generic, very knifey knife, um, but you are still featuring, of course, that shark lock, which is very fidget friendly, super fast, super easy, and of course, no play. The shark locks, while well, I haven't extensively tested either of these because I quite literally just got them in, um, shark locks from everything I've already experimented on with my previous shark cub, with my 8020.5s, it is a very strong lock. It's nothing to be concerned about. Out. So yeah, overall, these guys are pretty darn cool. Um, I, yeah, I have no complaints about them and definitely a nice pocket friendly blade. Once again, this is definitely going to be in a similar size range to things like the Spyderco Para 3, things like the Griptilian and Mini Grip. This would probably be somewhere in between, like bigger than a Mini Grip, but smaller than a full sized Griptilian but definitely within that range of things like a bug out and a mini bug out. In addition to, you're also gonna be looking at a little bit of a thinner, more slicey profile on both of these uh, blades, very reminiscent to the Shark Cub, like the original Shark Cubs. So yeah, it's, it's one of those things, uh, the Shark Lock is not for everyone. It's definitely a little bit of a different lock, but it's very fidget friendly. And uh, overall, it is a cool blade, but yeah, I don't know. I've Personally, like I said, had shark cubs before. I don't mind it. And I like the kind of smaller, more pocket friendly nature of the shark cub as opposed to even the 8020.5. But of course, the 8020 is uh, a very big knife. So this is definitely a little bit more pocket friendly than those. And lastly, running it out, you do have a nice deep carry clip on these guys. Like I said, pretty much the same hardware and setup from a normal shark cub, just made a little bit more affordable and out of uh, grivery for that um, kind of extra weight savings, like I said, primarily for the more affordable or affordability kind of range. And there's really nothing wrong with that. Um, I personally like all the 8020s or 20.5s, not the 20s, but the 20.5s, most of them um, factory came with, you know, grivery handles. And so uh, realistically, these, uh, those, those handles were never really problematic for me. So I don't have any problem with seeing the use of grivery here. Um, yeah, they're just fine. Now, of course, um, the last thing I totally forgot to mention, but just like the other shark cubs, these are made in Taiwan out of um, OS 10A. So keep that in mind uh, for what it's worth. Once again, I think a lot of people uh, like look at OS 10A and they're like, oh, you know, they think of OS 8. And don't be wrong, even OS 8 really isn't that bad, but OS 10A is definitely an improvement from there. So just because it's a close relative to OS 8 and uh, other, you know, um, Taiwanese steels doesn't make it a bad steel. I think it's perfectly fine, especially for an affordable or reasonably affordable um, pocket knife. So, anyways, uh, that's basically all I really have to say on the 80 or on the Shark Cubs, not 8020.5, but on the Shark Cubs. Like I said, you got different options, different blade steel. Deals. And I think the biggest improvement to this new drop is the fact that you have that additional um, contouring in the handles in the handles that make them a little bit more hand filling. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out. <laughs>